So what we're going to do today is we're going to define research data. Um, you're going to define research data first, and then we're going to all define it together. We're going to discuss types of research data, um, talk about file formats, and at the very end, I'm going to put it all together because the overview of research data, you probably walk in and you're like, well, what's that? Well, are we just going to talk about data types and formats and things like that? For the most part, yes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to tie it together and realize that to help you realize that the information you get from this course is going to be a foundation for the rest of your courses. So you'll have a solid foundation of research data, what it is, what kind of research data you're going to come up with your projects. So that way, when you write your data management plan later in the course, you'll be a lot better off. So, first thing we're going to do is an activity. So uh, pair up with someone near you. I believe we have 16 people, right? Yeah. So that's an even number. So go ahead and um, does everybody have no cards? Just before we get started, good. So pair up with somebody near you. Um, and the first thing I want you to do, I'm going to give you all about five minutes to do this. I want you, the first person, to explain to your partner what your definition of research data is. It can be a paragraph. It can be a sentence. It can be a list of bullet, bullet points. But I want you to give your partner the best definition of research data that you can and write it on the note card. And then when you're done, I want you to swap places and ask that person. Sound good? All right. I'll walk around and ask everyone how they're doing as we get started. Are we ready to come back together as a group, everybody? Do you need another minute? Pretty good. So who wants to bravely, first of all, just... How many of you had conflicting definitions of research data? Um, did any of you experience any contention in defining what is and what isn't research data? That's probably good. <laughs> what did you, did you guys, um, what I wanted to know is who's brave enough to volunteer or read me one of the definitions from your group one data management? Or you can give it to me and I'll read it. If your handwriting is pretty good. Anybody? Did you want me to read it or do you want me to read it? So we'll bring the mic around. Yeah. So do we combine these two um, You can read one or you can read both or you can combine them. We came up with a bulleted list uh, collected as research output. It's a base for further investigations after being processed. It can be reused. It can be structured according to topics and methods. It can be differently interpreted. It can serve short term or long term. It represents something empirical, something you can observe. It comes in many forms. It might be numerical, descriptive, etc. It's collected methodically, it's contextual, and it's great. Thank you. That's a great definition. Does anybody else want to read those? Yes. That was a pretty good one. <laughs> So now what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to work through a few definitions and we're just going to kind of, as we're working through them, just benchmark them against your own definitions and kind of see what you think. Got to remember what laptop I'm on here. So the first definition that we have comes from uh, Christine Borgman, who's a distinguished professor and presidential chair in uh, information studies at UCLA. Um, and I, this is my favorite definition of research data because it's looking at it conceptually. So rather than focus on this is research data, this isn't research data. Let's look at it in the context of scholarship. So, Data is an output of research, right? You do a project, you collect samples, you go on fun cruises, and you know, collect things from the ocean, and uh, eventually you analyze them, you use them, and whatever happens is you're gonna produce some sort of data set as part of your research, right? So it's the output of your research. But what I like is what Dr. Borgman says is that it's also Inputs to scholarly publications, so you need data to write papers, usually, right? We're all, you're all scientists. So, um, and more importantly, it's input to subsequent sharing and learning. So, I like Borgman's definition because it doesn't really, it doesn't categorize things as being part or not a part, but it actually forces you to think about data in the context of the research life cycle, which you're actually going to learn a lot more about tomorrow. Here's another academic definition. Um, this is from Anna Gold, and Anna is uh, the university librarian at Cal State Poly. Uh, she was actually a, um, a longtime librarian for the NSF and the Library of Congress. And uh, this is my second favorite, right? Because I got to pick what definitions I want to use. So um, I like this because it talks about data as the currency of science, a tangible thing 
that you put in to science and you, you know you generate better scholarship. So if publications are the currency of tenure, with how many of you are professors or in the academic realm? Not a lot of you. Okay, so I'll give you a brief. Um, the reason the reason it says currency is the tenure or publication of the currency of tenure because most academics have to publish a certain number of articles in a certain in very specific journals that are usually laid out in front of them um, when they're assistant professors. And if they don't publish a certain number of articles, and they don't make tenure, and they don't stay on the faculty. So publication is very much the currency of uh, tenure. And I, you know, I most typically my audience are academics or professors, um, and so that resonates with them. But even if publications are what gets you to keep your job, data is what goes into your publication. So without good data, you have nothing. Um, what I like is is these two definitions suggest that data is the foundation of scholarship. It is the very, it's the most basic piece of information that feeds into larger concepts and broader ideas. How many of you had really theoretical definitions like that? Anybody write that verbatim? Any <laughs> librarians? No. Here's one that might be a little more useful for you. This comes from the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, I'm going to read it verbatim. I'll try not to do that too much. But uh, the Office of Management and Budget defines data as the recorded factual material commonly accepted in the scientific community necessary to validate research findings. Notice I bolded the word validate. Um, as you see, and as we work through research data types and research data formats, you're going to realize that there's a lot more data, a lot more information that is necessary to validate your results than you might actually think at the beginning of your project. So this is the government definition, and this is the definition that a lot of folks who write grants um, and who have to write data management plans as part of the application process here in the States have to treat data with this definition. But I like it because it gets you to thinking about data in the terms of data management. One of the reasons you manage research data effectively is so that people can validate your findings or they can reproduce your results. So everything that goes in, all the data that needs to be managed, you need every piece that validates your research findings. Um, not just your raw data sets, things like that. Does that make sense? Does this inform your definitions, or does it muddy them, or are we kind of on the same lines? I actually heard some really good talks, people categorizing data and talking about qualitative and text data and numerical, so I did see you guys uh, actively working with it. Makes some pretty good definitions. And if you don't mind, I was going to keep your cards at the end because it makes me feel special. I like your data <laughs> definitions.